Today we are diving deep into a timeless medical saying, the 5 Fs, mnemonic, fair, fat, female, 40, fertile. Ever since the 1950s, this catchy phrase has helped doctors remember who is most at risk for gallstones, namely older, overweight, white women who have had several children. Classic, right? But here's a twist. Medicine isn't static. Today's training wants us to understand diseases thoroughly, not just memorize rhymes. Yet you will still find some old school doctors in medical colleges swearing the five Fs are gospel, despite mounting evidence of broader risk factors. Hi, I'm Gaurav and you're watching Gut Instincts. Last time we covered why stones form. It would be useful if you watch that video first to understand this video better. The big question for today is, are you at risk for gallbladder stones? Now, if you have been following our gallstone series, you know that there are two main types of gallstones. Cholesterol stones, which are most common, and pigment stones. Today, let's uncover which groups are most vulnerable for these stones. Coming to risk factors for cholesterol stones. Most gallstones are made of cholesterol. Too much cholesterol in bile leads to supersaturation and sedimentation as stones. Check out the video mentioned above. It explains everything in great detail. Let's figure out who is most likely to get cholesterol stones. Ethnicity. Native American tribes top the charts. Nearly 50% risk. White Americans and Europeans, they have a 20% chance of developing cholesterol gallstones. In India, prevalence is 3 to 6% and up to 7 times more common in northern India. Age. You are more prone to cholesterol gallstones as you, as you get older. Kids and teenagers rarely get cholesterol gallstones. As you age, your liver sends more cholesterol into the bile, which can sediment as stones. Sex. Women as, are twice as likely to be affected. The female hormone, estrogen, dumps extra cholesterol into the bile. Genes. A family history of gallstones in a blood relative triples your odds of getting cholesterol gallstones. Diet. The Western diet, especially American diet, is jam-packed with saturated fats, cholesterol, refined carbs, and low fiber. Perfect for gall cholesterol gallstones. Pregnancy. Because of increased estrogen and progesterone during pregnancy, the gallbladder doesn't work as well. So, bile sits around, stagnant, and it really gets saturated with cholesterol mainly in the last few months. This can cause the formation of cholesterol stones. Rapid weight loss. People on crash diets or those after weight loss surgery, up to half of these can develop gallstones within six months. Severe calorie restriction leads to reduced gallbladder contractility and increased cholesterol secretion in the bile. TPN, total parental nutrition. TPN means feeding a person through an IV line, skipping the gut entirely. Long-term TPN is needed in some diseases. This makes gallbladder less active, causing bile to stagnate, which greatly increases the risk of gallstones. About half of these patients develop gallstones after three to four months on TPN. Biliary sludge. Sludge is like the sand before the stone, often harmless, sometimes vanishes, sometimes kicks off cholesterol gallstone formation. A routine health checkup ultrasound may show gallbladder sludge. In most cases, Gallbladder sludge produces no symptoms and can disappear by itself. Medications Estrogens contained in birth control pills and hormone therapies can double the cholesterol gallstone odds. Estrogen lowers, actually lowers bad cholesterol in the blood and raises good cholesterol in the blood. This is good for heart, but it makes your bile more cholesterol rich, which increases the cholesterol risk formation in the gallbladder. Octotride. This injection is used for long-term treatment of some diseases like neuroendocrine tumors. It slows the gallbladder emptying, increases the risk of stones. GLP-1 agonists. Pharma industry loves these weekly weight loss shots. They melt your extra kilograms fast, but clog your gallbladder with stones. Thanks to a lazy gallbladder and a speedy weight loss. Ceftriaxone. Ceftriaxone is a common antibiotic for typhoid it can sometimes cause gallstones. It builds up in bile at levels 100 to 200 times higher than the blood levels 
and combines with calcium to form sludge and stones, especially in children on high dose of this antibiotic. The good news is that these stones clear up after stopping the antibiotic. These are not typical cholesterol stones but antibiotic related stones. Who knew antibiotic can also cause gallstones? Obesity. When you are obese, your liver li makes and sends more cholesterol into your bile. Plus, your gallbladder often has a harder time squeezing and emptying properly. So things move slowly. Blood cholesterol. High bad cholesterol and low good cholesterol in the blood often comes with obesity. Changing bile's makeup and leading to gallstones. Not directly from the blood cholesterol, but from the bile imbalance within the liver. Diabetes. Previously, diabetes was thought to increase the risk of gallstones. So far, there is no proof that it directly causes gallstones. Small intestine diseases. In the last video, we learned that bile acids help digest fat and prevent gallstones. They are mostly absorbed in the lower small intestine. When this part of intestine is damaged, like in diseases like IBD or when this part is surgically removed, bile acid absorption drops, shrinking the bile acid pool size and raising the risk of cholesterol gallstones. Small intestine problems can also cause pigment gallstones. This unabsorbed bile acid, because of lack of this part of intestine, reaches the large intestine, increasing the bilirubin absorption, which is a waste product that should ideally be excreted in stools. This raises bilirubin concentration in the bile and it leads to pigment stone formation. Fatty liver. This problem is often linked to metabolic issues like obesity, diabetes and metabolic syndrome, which raise the risk of gallstones. However, having fatty liver alone usually doesn't increase the risk of gallstones. Celiac disease. After a fatty meal, chemicals like CCK from the upper small intestine make the gallbladder contract and open the bile duct to release bile. In celiac disease, a damaged intestinal lining Reduce this CCK release so the gallbladder doesn't empty well. This causes bile to stagnate, cholesterol to build up in bile and increase the risk of cholesterol gallstones. Coming to some protective factors for cholesterol gallstones. This might play a part in preventing gallstones but it's unclear how effective they really are. Statin medicines. These are cholesterol lowering medicines used for high blood cholesterol. These may have some protective role but it's not very clear. Vitamin C and coffee. Study shows mild protection with these. The clinical significance of these findings, however, remains unclear. Now, don't blindly trust popular health influencers promoting smoothies with all these ingredients to prevent gallstones. In an earlier video, I explained that pigment gallstones are mostly made of bilirubin, a byproduct of red blood cell breakdown. Your liver does a clever trick called conjugation turning the water insoluble bilirubin into a soluble form so that it can be excreted in bile and then into stools. When this process falters, insoluble bilirubin sticks around forming stones. There are two main types of pigment stones, black and brown, depending on how much insoluble bilirubin they contain. Black stones pop up when there is excess red blood cells breakdown like in hemolytic anemias, example, sickle cell anemia and thalassemia. Or when the liver is damaged, like in liver cirrhosis, this causes bilirubin to misbehave. Some gut diseases like IBD can also tip the scales towards black stones, as I discussed a few minutes ago. Coming to broad pigment stones, these form when there is bile stagnation, especially with bacterial infections. These bacteria release enzymes that clump the soluble chemicals together into stones. You usually see this after bile duct or liver procedures like surgeries or ERCP. So black stones are typically caused by high bilirubin levels whereas brown stones flourish in bile that is stagnant and full of bacteria. Often it's not just one thing but many things come together that cause gallstones formation. One thing I didn't mention before is water intake because it's not a risk factor or a preventive factor for gallstones. Some patients say they drink tons of water but still get gallstones. Sometimes even doctors tell them to drink more water to flush out the stones. This might work for some kidney stones but here's the truth. Gallstones don't care how much your water you, water you gulp down. Your kidneys and toilet will. Instead of visiting the bathroom 5-10 to 10 times a day, 
you might be there 50 times so don't trust one stone one solution advice each body stone comes with its own drama plot twists exit strategy Iraldo Banovac an insightful Croatian author said and I quote superficial knowledge is potentially more dangerous than ignorance it gives a false sense of security encouraging an ignorant man to persevere in his efforts which can result in huge damage end quote this rule applies to everyone doctors included especially with google and chat gpt around so the next time your doctor fitness instructor or financial advisor honestly admits to not knowing something but promises to find a solution give them the respect they deserve many problems lack straightforward readily available solutions hoping to find hoping to get that kind of answers all the time even from an expert is sometimes foolishness thomas sowell a prominent american economist and social theorist whom i respect a lot said once and i quote it takes considerable knowledge just to realize the extent of your own ignorance end quote so if this video made the concept of gallstones risk clearer and debunked some old myths Take a look at our other videos in the Goldstone series. Thank you for watching Gut Instincts. See you in our next video. Bye.